Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to take a look at Furia's playstyle, specifically on T side I'm focusing on here, and how they've used it to rocket up the standings and beat so many top teams. Now, you might have expected me to look at Nuke here, however, I think Mirage is a more accessible map for people to view and really understand, and I think they have so many fantastic rounds that really deserve a great look on Mirage here. So this is one of them, and it's very hard to actually capture everything in one moment with Furia because what they're doing is manipulating rotations to a degree that you'll see from almost no other team. So they're going very fast towards middle here with the smoke in window and they're going to get two kills on the mid players and they're going to know a little bit of information here. They know there's a player on cat and they know there's a player window and you're going to notice that Furia uses this information better than almost any other team. They recognize here that there's almost definitely not going to be a player window after he leaves window window because window is not generally a place people play in a 3v4 he's more likely to be somewhere near connector top con and he did just molly Vinny out of uh, palace here so they have decent information on that they also have an expectation on where the third player will be which is likely CT, and because Vinny has been mollied off, I think he expected he might have been spotted here in Palace. He knows that Dupree can't be focused on ramp realistically because he could get swung from Palace, and as they've made noise here, Yuri's going to drop off. He, they know Dupree has to be watching that flank there. So he's watching the flank. Mag Majestic's going to go for a kill and he's going to be able to find it. And that's going to execute. That's going to cause them to go out immediately. Able J immediately comes out ramp. And you'll notice here from Vinny, he's not exposing himself to CT. He understands that that is an area that the rotation is probably there. Dupree is probably looking at him. And Able J is the one that makes the play on the guy towards jungle and again Vinny's not peeking CT he's not giving up this kill he's just quick peeking he's trying to make sure he can get a trade Abel J gets taken out and he quickly looks for the kill realizes he can't find it and backs up but Yuri here is already going for the flank and again you're going to see from Yuri this is a fantastic understanding of rotations he knows Dupree's looking at his back look how many times he jiggle peeks there to grab out the shot because he knows he's going to be there and after he finds that they know for sure device is rotating off of cat before they even spot him it's pretty obvious where he's going to be coming from in that situation they smoke him off flash him off and device really doesn't have much of a chance here so this is just fantastic rotational gameplay amazing understanding of exactly where players are going to be at given times from furia and where those rotations are going to end up going and that's what you really see from furia they play very aggressively very quick they have very little downtime in how quickly they see an opening and they execute on it because they really understand where those rotations are going to be going and that's why they do well so well on nuke as well with their squeaky plays with their quick pops it's because of their understanding of rotations one of the other things that makes Furia scary, and I'm going to skip a few rounds ahead here, is how explosive they can be. You never know when Furia is going to pop out four players off of one flash in an area that you thought you had map control of. So here you're going to see Astralis go for mid control. Vinny should be hearing them push up mid here, and they're just going to pop straight out A ramp. No flash before they go for the first peak, and they're going to get pushed up very quickly here. Get pushed up A control, and they're going to smoke top con to even go for window control and jungle control here. Instead of the typical, you know, they might smoke off con, and they might smoke off stairs. Instead, they're going fully aggressive. They're going for map control here as aggressively as they can. And to prevent the rotation, again, understanding of rotations, they know that Astralis has to come up connector here, so rather than allowing them to come up connector and retake you know from a comfortable position with jungle control furia forces them off of connector and says if you want to retake a you either need to go all the way around or you need to retake jungle too and Vinny's going to be right here forcing them to clear every angle as they go for the retake this is understanding very good understanding of the rotations and an idea of what they want to do if a mid push comes out as well as just the the understanding of how aggressive they can be you never know when Fury is going to pop out of an area with three or four players off of a smoke and a flash. Uh, they do the same thing at Squeaky on Nuke all the time. They have two players, one with a smoke, one with a flash. Flash mini, 
pop flash out four players are out of squeaky before you can even think twice about it and that's what makes that's another part of what makes them scary and all of these things you're going to notice they work together very well so i want to say that part of understanding furia is actually understanding art because he really does create a ton of space for his team and more importantly he keeps teams honest by playing as insane aggressively as he does he makes sure teams cannot play an exploitable style a, a super passive style where they're not covering every single angle if you're playing against furia and you're not covering every possibility and by covering every possibility you have to be super passive and super spread out which means those four pops are going to work really well if you're not covering every possible angle art's going to find that angle and here he is boosting up in a window there's they're for some reason not covering it this round they've they've kind of rotated around art found that opening and he's going to get a free kill off of it he's going to open up the round and this is a force buy here from astrala so it's not it's not a full buy it's not like furia should be losing this round but still you can see exactly how it works they found an opening and they just dominated the force buy and even though art will die in the end he's going to die to uh zip x there with the scout still he created the opening towards A, and again, he's making sure that these teams, when it gets to be late round, when it gets to be these weird situations, he's making sure that those teams are always watching every angle, and they're not kind of stacking, waiting for the four-man pop-out, because Art will, Art will punish that. So now I'll give you a good idea of why it looks so bad when it goes wrong. So those rounds looked great. He got a lot of information, he got pushed up, he got into good spots, but when it goes bad, he, to a viewer, to like a casual observer, he looks like an idiot. So here, the plan is actually, they're going to Palace here, and they're going three towards B. The plan is to use a bunch of utility that you know might fake a team out because with these smokes down it does look like the type of flash pop play that furia will make where they'll go out with four three or four players and they're sending art out to be the bait man um, and try and get pushed up control and it's supposed to draw a rotate for these players palace to come out however art's just gonna die straight through the smoke there to dupree with an off on cat and this kind of falls apart immediately because astralis knowing the way furia plays they're not surprised by it at all they're just holding their positions. They're not rotating at all unless they have to. And this is why in some of the games in the series and, and several times in, you know, in every game, it sometimes looks like art is kind of just suiciding out, but there's a reason for it. Again, there is a reason for it. He's creating space. He's getting map control. He's forcing teams to be honest. If they're not rotating a player when all of that utility comes out towards B and all of those, you know, flashes and smokes are thrown, that means something, and Fury can use that information and use it to their advantage. If they're not rotating when all of that utility gets thrown, when a player pushes out B, that means if they do push out B with four players, probably utility still isn't going to be used. Um, rotations might not come out very quickly, and they can do their you know four-man pop flash plays that work incredibly well, because if the team does rotate, this, this YOLO play from Art is going to work perfectly. If the team doesn't rotate, the four-man pop is going to work perfectly. So it's kind of a, you know, a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation for a lot of these teams against Furia. So I'll just give you here a quick example of what it's kind of supposed to look like. And this is going to be against Fnatic. So Fnatic has already been kind of dominated by these four pop plays, you know, several times this half. They've lost quite a few rounds to it. So they're, they're paranoid about it. And this, this YOLO play from Art, the same exact YOLO play because it's done against a team that will rotate because they've had trouble against it. Look at the rotation here coming out of Fnatic they don't rotate until art gets killed until they're sure that this is a push and it's not just a smoke fake they start to rotate and you're gonna see furia make their way out they're already out before the rotate comes back they only partially rotated they didn't full rotate but a partial rotate was enough there for furia to get a site control now Vinny went for a play he tried to get jungle control because that's part of the plan there they molly deep jungle to try and push up and catch players and get control of jungle so that they would force fanatic to have to retake only from ct 
Didn't work there for Vinny, but they're going to 3v5 it anyway. So Abel J gets one, Yuri gets one, K Serato gets one, and then K Serato is going to get, I believe, both players here as they come through CT. And that's what it's supposed to look like. The team didn't full rotate, they partial rotated. Furia, again, understanding rotations executed on the timing got out before the rotate the half rotate came back they tried to get pushed up jungle control because they understand that you know 4v5 you have to get a trade for something Re a retake is not that hard uh, in theory so they try and get pushed up jungle control it doesn't end up working out for them but they still manage to win the round anyways um, and that's how it's supposed to look if teams over rotate again if they over rotate They'll probably deal with the four ones, you know, the, the five man or four man pops a little bit better, but if they don't over rotate or, but if they do that, then these one man fake plays, these one man information plays are going to get more rotates and it's going to get cause more damage when they're going the other way. So to summarize here, what is Furious playstyle and what makes them so good? Well, they're very aggressive, often in coordinated ways. Many times it looks loose. However, they're great at manipulating rotations and many times a play they're making is based on great communication that allows them to have an understanding of where exactly the weak points in the map are for an opponent. They constantly make teams worried and make them play safe or make them play honest by covering every angle because because with Furia, you never know if they're suddenly flashing and behind a flash coming out with four players just swinging wide on you and trying to take a bomb site seemingly in an instant. You always have to be worried about what that means. And they also have art running around and making every team worried about any area that they're not looking at. So if they want to be playing passive to deal with these aggressive, sometimes somewhat loose, sometimes solo aggressive plays from Fury, if they want to play passive to try and get those players into crossfires, Art's going to be there finding the weaknesses in that passive setup, finding what angles they're not holding and exploiting that to the greatest extent he can. So I'm going to show you around here and this is going to be against Fnatic from Fury and this is going to be on Mirage here. And uh, this is a great example of how they manipulate rotations yet again and how they do it. It needs to be very quick. This is incredibly crisp and it looks kind of loose if you're not really paying attention because they do just run out A here to some extent, but there's definitely reasons behind it so they're faking mid here you're gonna see three smokes land in middle and they've gone quickly up cat several times now with these two exact same smokes so they know that by throwing those smokes they're likely to cause a partial rotate from JW in window here towards B to support his team at the same time arts going for a pick towards a and obviously art going for a pick doesn't necessarily mean his team is anywhere near him so it doesn't necessarily mean all that much then you have a him get the pick on crims and this is going to cause a different rotation it's going to cause brawl to start rotating into sight however because they've already got the idea in their head that probably jw is likely to be rotating towards market they want to bust out a as quickly as possible and take down what is probably a solo a player and they're going to catch brawl here moving his way into sight because his teammate got picked and he wants to try and hold on as long as possible so without even any smokes out yet they're going to go wide swing out and watch what happens happens here from Vinny. He's going directly towards CT spawn. He knows that the, the CT spawn player was likely partially rotated. He wants to catch that player out and there's zero hesitation there. Vinny and Abel J both push towards CT. They catch the players in rotation and K Serato is there to support three players peeking directly into CT spawn, finding the info, information, getting control of the map and putting Fnatic in an awkward spot that they're very uncomfortable with. This is what Fury is great at. They understand the rotation there they understood what they needed to do and there was zero hesitation 100 confidence in their gameplay on that call on that read and it works out for them perfectly this is the this is a great example of a round from furia where they just know what's up and they know what they're doing well 
So to end this video off, I'm going to show you one final round from Furia versus Astralis that really exemplifies the confidence that these guys play with. They really do go into every round and every situation with 100% confidence in their player's ability, their own ability, and their teammate's ability as well. So they're going to be going towards B at the beginning. Yuri's going to go towards mid here, and he's going to hear three players in mid. He hears two players close to him, and here's the player in window. And that's going to proc Furia to want to go quickly towards B here. And they're not going to give two too much away. Caserato is just throwing a basic nade set, but eventually they're going to start to group, and before they're fully grouped, it's going to be Caserato and Able J going in. And I just want you to see Caserato's route here. Even with only two players leading, he goes deep into the site. He's not worried about that player bench. They know because of their understanding, probably some reading into Astralis, some understanding of their rotations, and just understanding of rotations in general. They understand that it's going to be a single player B, obviously, because there's three in middle and they have full confidence case serato to clear out cat cats clear he's not worried that his single teammate might lose the engagement as he's spread out from his his other teammates a little bit behind here he's not worried about that he's worried about getting pushed up on the rotate make sure that when his teammate wins that engagement when they get the kill he's here to make sure that they can hold the bomb site after that that rotation from window the fast rotate from Ma uh, magisk here is not gonna get anything done. That's the confidence Furia plays with, and even when it goes wrong, Majisk is gonna find a timing and grab a kill there. He's gonna get traded. Even when it goes wrong, they do a fantastic job of it, and they're still gonna win this round, even though, you know, the pushed up play didn't work. It still got the information, it got the damage, and it prevented the rotate. That's exactly what they wanted from it, and it works out perfectly. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. You can also catch me live on Twitch most days if you want to watch that. I'll see you next video.